Hey guys, welcome to Brow Edit tutorial number 11. And this is dealing with duplicating a model. Let's, in this case, it's a gravity model. And having it uh, use a custom texture, texture that you've changed or want to use, doesn't matter. And this is really what's gonna, how it's gonna look like from beginning to end. We have a normal tree model from gravity, whatever. And this is the same model but uh, it's utilizing a different texture and notice that it is not in conflict with the other model itself. Both are completely different and they're used. So this is a good way to pretty much uh, make a map that uses the same kind of model but will not come into conflict with it because maybe it's this map has a, has a, spe a special theme. So maybe it, this particular map has snow on the leaves but this one clearly does not have snow. I don't know what the heck it put on it. Paintball, paint for all I care, but this is really going to show you how that's done, this tutorial itself. So let me show you the first step, and that is to choose your model. And to choose your model, we're going to use the um, RSM uh, menu inside a browser. To do that, all you have to do is go to Windows, RSM Editor. Now, the RSM Editor will be used to assign your custom textures and to open the model itself so you know right, this is the model that you want. So how did I actually choose the tree? To do that I used GRF Factory or GRF Tool and just f grabbed a random model and I'll show you how I got those textures that works with it too. So let's go to a GRF Tool and open it. Alright so here's GRF Tool so just open up your data.grf. So here's my data.grf and all you gotta do is choose any model that you want. In this particular case, I just grabbed a random one. I can't remember what it was, but let me just give you the, the uh, just the, the 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 functionality of this, or what is the practicality of it. So let's just say let's just say I want to choose this one. Whatever, just extract it. So hit extract, desktop, save, whatever. Now, if we let's just say we wanted to decide on using it, it's very simple. All I gotta do is open up route it and use the RSM menu like I said before and test it whether this is the one you'd like to use so what the heck is this thing oh never mind <laughs> it looks like it's a single texture use and it's some kind of uh, I can't see completely but I think I know what this is it's like um, a block for I don't know, bushes or some kind of bush or whatever anyways let's just say we want to use this okay so all you gotta do is find this texture and how do you find it? Easy, look very carefully on the very right hand side it looks like it's called cc underscore castle so how do we find cc underscore castle? Very simple just use GRF tool and search for it. So here's my GRF tool I'm gonna open that sucker up uh, reopen your data.grf alright and no notice that whenever that texture it used was called cc underscore castle and we have something here, cc underscore castle, castle. So how do you know it's the right one? We'll just scroll through it and find it. Where is it? Oh, I think this is it right here. So let me just verify that with Browdit. It should tell us right on the spot. Yep, that's definitely the one. So that's a really, really easy way to find the text that you need, that you wish to edit for your needs. So in the case, just make sure that there's nothing else there. Yeah, there's nothing else. So it's definitely that one texture. So all I gotta do is, is to extract it. There it is. So take that, extract it to your desktop, save, whatever. Alright, so we have our texture. Pretty simple. Now let's rename this model to something that we want to use. So rename it. Let's call it, I don't know, custom underscore bush. It's a custom bush. I don't know why I called it. It's just to, to make things easy and simple for us. And for the texture, we're going to call this custom underscore bush underscore texture. Yes, it's very long, but whatever. It's going to work. Now, I said before that, we, that I made a tree with a duplicate model, and it's the same model, and I told you that was, we were going to use it, but I guess it'll be easier for you guys to understand if I just work with this one itself, just to make things more easier. All right, so we're going to use a bush in this case. Who cares about the tree anymore? All right, so what's the next thing we do? Well, we got to add the model and the texture to browse it. All right, so what do we do for that? Easy. Open up your row textures and your row models.xml. So here's your textures. Here, here's your row models that, uh, that, uh, that 
uh, txt. Wait, did I just say XML? I'm sorry, txt. Yes, I'm not doing too well today. Anyways, and also for the textures custom, I said textures.txt, it's, te it's textures custom.txt. You can add it to textures.txt as well, but this is really just makes it easier to add your textures that are custom and remove it so you don't have to search through like a, I don't know, easy easy 2000 line text document. So you can notice that I already have something set up here because that was from the tree. But who cares about the tree? So let's add our own. So what? How, how is this going to work? Well, first of all, if you looked in my previous tutorials on adding custom textures, you wouldn't know what the heck I'm doing. So if you don't know what I'm doing, go watch it and then come back. All right, so what are we doing here? Let's so that we're going to add our pathway. We're going to make it go to bush. So, you know, route it. If you click custom, it's going to be under bush. So you notice over here, uh, if I went to T, whatever, custom, it'll be under tree, well, in bush in this case. So let's do that. So bush, now the name of the, f the tester, the, of the texture itself, what was it called? Some gigantic name. Don't forget the extension, .bmp. Split that back to our main area, bush, slash, dot. And this is, of, this of course, is the pathway in our GRF. That's the pathway in Browdit. Pretty simple. And it's just one texture, so it's not going to be a hard thing to do. Save that. And now let's add our pathway to our model, custom model. Row, it's going to be under custom, and it's going to be under something called, I don't know, bush, whatever. Now the pathway to in our GRF model, bush, and the name of it, which was custom underscore bush. Okay, pretty simple. And save that. All right, so we've added it. Now, how do we actually get this and route it? Is making your GRF. So pretty simple. Make a new folder. Data easy. Make a new folder for your model. Model one for your texture. Texture. Leave the model empty for now. Nothing goes in here, but it's going to be a placement, a placeholder for when we actually have the model done. Texture, what do we call it? Uh, bush, it's under bush. So make a new folder, call it bush. And just drop your texture in there. Now, of course, we need we need some kind of a distinction to know that we've added a custom texture and it's not being used by the other model. So why don't we just change this with paint or something? So here's your model, here's your, I don't know, texture. Let's just do something really random on it. The best thing to do is to test this out. How about a heart? Yeah, Valentine's Day just passed by, so why not just keep that celebration going for those who are enjoying that. Uh, there we go. So, big heart right there. And to make it easier for us to see it, let's make it a... Uh, let's actually call all right, so I'm going to do a really, really, really quick color on this thing just so we can see something on the model. Okay, we got a heart going. It looks pretty good. I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 for sure. All right, so just to save that, done. It's, keep in mind, 2 for 6 uh, colors, BMP file. It should automatically recognize that and save that there. All right, good. So we have that done. Next, so the texture's inside. It's all custom, as you can see. So it's definitely different. I really don't give a crap about it, whether it's going to make our model look bad, but this is just for testing purposes. Okay, I think we're almost ready to go. So now we gotta convert this data into a GRF. And to do that, I'm gonna use Griff. So here's just my test server grounds. Start that up. Add the directory, desktop, data. Yes, yes, whatever. It's in there. And just save it as what whatever you want to call it. We're gonna call this test. Why? Again, easy to to uh, keep track of and close out. We're going to need to use our Griff S again very shortly. Alright, so here's your uh, test URF, can teach our custom texture, and the pathways needed for our model. So let's add that to Brow Edit. Easy data, config, row XML, and then just, you know, add your uh, name of that. It's called test. Excellent. Save that, close, and let's start up Brow Edit. Well, we kind of already have it open, but we need to reload it because we're adding another, we just add another GRF. So let's open up a map, any map, Prontera, whatever. So here's, here's Prontera. Let's just make sure that our textures are being read. T, custom, there it is. Excellent, so we could see it. Now let's assign that texture to our model. And how to do that? Easy, Windows, RSM Editor. Click Open, 
go to that custom model that we had. I think it was on our desktop. Yes, it was. Custom bush. Now you can notice that it had the default texture already assigned to it, built inside the RSM uh, file itself. So let's change that. And how do you do it? Easy. Just select the texture like this, and then select, select something else and save. And that's what it looks like. Oh my god, it's like a bloody mess. It's not even look, it doesn't even look like a heart anymore. Oh well. Yeah, we're done. So just save that, of course. Uh, close browse it and let's put that model into our our actual GRF and re restart a browse it. So let's do that now with Griff S. Okay, so opened up Griff S. We're gonna open up the here's our custom GRF. Go to model because now we're gonna add our model. Now I did miss something here and that was just the model location. No notice that it's in data model bush. So I'm missing the bush directory. Don't worry about it. Pretty simple. Just uh, okay. You're not gonna have to add a new uh, file. So let's just make a new directory and, call, and put the actual file in there too. So just close that. Uh, close that. Let's make something called bush. And drop that edited uh, model file right inside. And then we're good. All right. So now let's just add that folder right here. Add directory. It's called bush. Where the heck are you, bush? Where are you? There you are. Excellent. Yes. So notice data model. Why the heck is that in there? Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just get rid of this first. <laughs> this is turning to a nightmare, isn't it? Yes, delete that. Okay, whatever. And the whole thing crashed. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. So start up Griff open up that uh, GRF. There it is. Oops. Wrong. Open up the GRF. Okay, good. Good. Edit. Add. New. Why don't I just do that? Add new folder. Bush. Wow. What am I doing? Add new folder. Add file. We wanted the... Uh, where is it? Uh, come on, where the heck is it? There it is, custom bush. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Bush is inside, model is in there, under bush. We're good to go. We save it. We're done. Boot up uh, browse it, and you will notice something brand new. Brand spanking new. Alright, so let's go with that. Go to your models. M. We went under custom. Sorry, not custom. Row custom. Remember we called a bush? There it is. Paste it. And my browser it seems to be really acting up on me. But you can see that we have our model there. What the heck is going on? I gotta restart it. Who cares? Alright, so let's just find the same model that somehow utilizes that similar look. This might take some time to find it, but I should be able to find it relatively quickly. Uh, okay. Alright, so I believe I found it. I think it was either this one or this one. But the point remains whoops, that we have two completely different models. Even though they are from the same. Okay, so it was this one. It was this model right here that we used. And it, as you can see, come on, there. You can see that they are completely different. The textures are different, and you could use this model in a completely different map, and you won't get any kind of conflict. And that's how you add a duplicate model utilizing a custom texture, whether that texture is your own or you just edit it from its from the uh, original model's uh, location. And uh, that's it. So get on to that, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on my next tutorial. Bye.